Yo, what's up everybody, it's your boy J-Rock right here. Now today we're gonna be doing another manga review. This is gonna be an omnibus, so uh, an omnibus is a three-in-one usually, right? So you're gonna get three volumes and one book. So this review is gonna be reviewing the first three volumes basically of this series called Sayuki. Now down here, it says Sayuki, the original series. Now it says the original series because there is other spin-offs. There's a uh, Sayuki Blast, Sayuki Reload, and, and a few others, right? I have not read those yet, so I don't know if it's still the same characters or if every spin-off uh, we will be following a new group of characters, right? So first let's talk about the build of this book. All right, so let's check out the cover. As you can see here, the letters, see how they're like shiny? It says Sayuki, then it says the original series. This would also be shiny. Then over here says the Resurrected Edition, meaning it's the hardcover omnibus. Nice hardcover. Over here too, you see the shine on some of these other things. It says volume one. Uh, the mangaka here is Kasuya Minekura. Now here, uh, I, what really got my interest was the cover. I mean, check it out. This guy is a samurai holding a gun. Right, I mean, how often do you see that? And I was led to believe that it was uh, based on just the cover and the artwork that this was gonna be like in the old uh, ancient Japan, right? So where there was no guns yet, just samurais and swords and all that. So I was like, what the hell, I got a gun in the olden times? So that, okay, here you get the book open. This is the spine, it says volume one. Now all of these, it's four volumes and they all have these, these uh, the same spine but this uh, brownish color here, and on the letters, the same color. On each book, it would be different. On one, it'll be green, one, it'll be blue, and so on and so on. So this is our main character here, the samurai. And then you see the back of them here. It's like the pages connect, the front cover and back cover. And these are his three uh, partners that are on this journey with him to the West. And yes, it's based on this movie called Journey to the West. I've seen that before. Uh, I watched the first like 30 minutes of it. And I, I forgot what I had to do, but I had to do something, so I never finished watching it. But I was enjoying it. And I heard this was based on that movie. So I said, you know what? Let me pick up the manga. And after reading the whole uh, first three volumes here, it's nothing like the movie. The story is completely different. Uh, again, I didn't finish watching the movie. So maybe later it's kind of like the book. But at this point, it's uh, nothing like the movie. All right, let's start off on the first page here. I really like the artwork here. Now this art, um, it clearly looks like it was meant to be in color. Pretty sure it was meant to be in color and then now they scanned it in black and white. Because you see a lot of dark shades, a lot of dark grays and so forth. So it says here, prologue, go to the west. Now when we get to the actual art, you see how it's a lot different, more lighter. Now this is art that was meant to be in uh, black and white. Okay, so let's start on this page real quick. Uh, let's read right here. It says, and to do it, they are using forbidden and profane practices. Then over here says, they are combining science and yokai magic. Here you see this character, I like the artwork right here, you see these other two characters, but there's all kinds of like busy stuff going on over here too. But you see two hands like with bones and over here as well. Now this one, the human hand, it has like robotic parts, look at this. And the yokai part has like bones. So that, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now look at them here, they're really going at it. Look at they're just chopping these guys up. So it starts off with a lot of action in the first like 10 pages, then it gets kind of slow. So basically these yokai, um, they're, at least in this book, they're almost like elves. They look like humans, but they have pointy ears like elves, right? And uh, something happened where they turned against humanity. At first they got along. Something happened through this black magic and stuff that was going on. And now they're almost like zombies. A lot of them are kind of zombified. That means they've gone in a lot of infected or whatever with this curse or, or spell, right? And there are some that still kind of function normally. But the ones that function normally, they still don't like humans because now they have like a, like a beef going on between each other. So it's almost, at, at times it almost felt like a zombie story. But in, instead of zombies, you have yokai. Right, so I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was gonna be a samurai story. And at least in this first three volumes, it was much more like a like a zombie type story. And it felt more like a slice of life because they're going on a journey from the east to the west. And on this journey, they constantly stop at places to try to figure out how to make food, how to make shelter. They just have, they chat, have conversations. So 
it almost felt like slice of life as we get to know these characters and their personalities. We didn't uh, dig too deep in their backgrounds, like how they all met and how they linked up, right? We, we barely got hints at some of them. But I've been reading volume two right now and uh, we flesh out the other uh, characters origin stories in volume two and some of them in volume one. All in all, it, it, was, uh, it wasn't really what I expected as far as the story. So it was a bit slow paced. I was expecting more, more action, a samurai type of story where they're kind of like action thrillers almost. So uh, like you get mystery and stuff like that. Here you didn't get a lot of that. You did get a slow story that they doesn't reveal a lot yet. So, so it felt almost like a mystery in that way. But I don't think that was done on purpose. At least it didn't feel like it was. It just felt like it was more dragging out the story than anything. The art was always strong through the whole book. I really enjoyed the art. The ending was killer because we get introduced to this guy named Shuei. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen. And he's this samurai who wants to kill yokai because he knows they're kind of like at war with them. He thinks our, our squad here, our group, he thinks they're, they're yokai. So he's out to get them and he's about to fight with them. All right, here we get this character. He thinks they're a uh, yokai. So you see him about to attack them. Look at this when they see. I like the art right here. Go, ah! And then you have these lines to give it like urgency that it's a fast moving scene, right? Look at over here. Ah, you see the blood splatter. And this guy's holding his hand like, ah, why didn't I react quicker? Bam, look at this. Our main character, the leader of the team, the one that was holding the gun in the cover, he's been hit by this guy. So it looks like he's about to meet his demise the hands of this fellow here which is that guy Shoei or Shui, whatever his name is so he thinks he's Hyunin Yokai now you think he's dead but this guy look, look really like the art here it's two page spread again you think he's dead but he's not dead he's just on the brink of death they do save him obviously he's our main character and we're barely on the first book so main characters never die on the first book am I right and during this fighting which was real cool I really enjoyed the fighting here I get revealed that he's kind of slowly being possessed by a yokai himself, right? So that was a bit interesting because I thought yokai were just born yokai, right? And that the twist here was that they're being corrupted now by some spell, so they're turning against humans. But it turns out humans can be turned into yokai. So I don't know how that works. At least that's how I understood it here. Maybe I'll explain more in volume two because it was vaguely starting to hint at that. When the volume end, when the omnibus ended, right? Here's the end of the book. You get these characters in color. I like this character. He's pretty cool. He's like the cool guy that smokes cigarettes and is like a little bit mysterious. And here's our main character, the one that carries the revolver, while everybody else carries some type of a uh, handheld weapon, like a um, sword and, and stuff like that. So he's the one that's in trouble at the end of this volume. And I, here's another. Uh, some more art in color. Really wish some of these mangas were in color. That would have been pretty cool. This is kind of more like the basic color what I would expect a manga like this to be. But the colors I really enjoyed was this one. This last page, I really like the color in here. It uh, has a completely different tone than the other pages, right? Like, look at it. If the art was colored in this style, the whole book, oh my god, I'll be so badass. Alright, if you guys have read this series before, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section down below. Especially if you read the, the whole thing. I'm about halfway through volume 2. It has picked up for sure. And um, I'm going to do, by next week, I should have the review for volume 2. Once I review all four omnibuses, I'll probably do a video as an overview as a whole, right? Of the whole series and kind of my final thoughts on the, on the whole thing once I have, have already read it from beginning to end. Other than that, um, I'd like to thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to check out the video. Hopefully you hit that like button. You know, it really helps out the channel. And I'll check you guys out next time.